Hey, welcome. It's July 15th, 2012. You're watching and listening to another Nerd Stalker Tech Week update, and I'm by my count, it's number 35. That's right. I am Greg Valoria, aka Social Greg, on Twitter, and you are. I am Adolfo Ferranda, at Nerd Stalker on Twitter. Uh, Greg, so man. You know, another great week of t- technology here uh, seemed to go by so fast. Um, well, uh, did you succumb to that doomsday July 9th thing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. I, I pretty much just was laid fl- I flatlined all day long, and then I just, <laughs> I didn't go into the light, and I came back. So, <laughs> oh, my God. So the series yeah. of tubes that the internet is, uh, same, somehow someone put that right tube back into place. So good on you. Nice. Nice, nice. All right, man. Nice. Well, let's get into the good right. stuff here. Greg, first story. Uh, from two hundred million to five hundred thousand. What is this lesson from who to what? Huh? <laughs> oh well, that was from uh, Entrepreneur Magazine, and thank you for that story uh, this week. Uh, as you know, uh, Dig completely sold out, and it's going to close its doors eventually. Mm. Um, and you know, the story wasn't, you know, how much, and we'll talk about that mm. actually. You know, the five hundred K is kind of misrepresented as. Uh, my listener or my follower, uh, Mr. Wrong, pointed out uh, mm. from TechCrunch, they actually ended up paying $12 million in, uh, and basically by selling the IP assets uh, to and and the team to Washington Post and LinkedIn, believe it or not. But, wow. but I, I think uh, the interesting part of why I mentioned the story is really, you know, how, how do startups really end up just – Attacking after being, you know, the darling, uh, darling of the of, of of the world for you know six to nine, two years, whatever mm-hmm. the the number is, right? Mm-hmm. And they Good brought question. three things. I thought, yeah, uh, continue to innovate and provide value. Yeah, I guess that sure. makes sense. But you know, I think um, uh, the next thing is uh, make sure the system works. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> was, you know, it's mm-hmm. got to work, mm-hmm. um, regardless of what platform you're on. Right. Uh, and uh, place, co- place close attention to design execution, which I thought was kind of an interesting thing. Um, mm. You know, no one ever mentions that in terms of, you know, um, you know, app, uh, web app success. But I, I really believe mm. the user interface and design execution is key. I, I You yeah. always talk about that to me, That's actually. Mm-hmm. You know. And I thought uh, this article that we're going to post up later was really good because it just summarized, you know, how a a a person who or a app who who's really popular could just tank in at a moment's notice, and you know, and then you know, Reddit's eating their lunch essentially, right? Mm, yeah, there so, you go. Yeah, I know a lot of people were saying so, what Facebook was. The, initially, it's like, oh, Facebook is the one that killed them, and then people realize, oh, wow, it was Reddit, right? And then back in yeah. the day, Kevin. Well, first off, I got to say. Um, uh, Dig was uh, literally right across the street from me here, and um, oh, okay. and it was you know they were a vibrant company. Everyone was there. I would see uh, you know Jay Adelson, their former CEO, and Kevin Rose all the mm. time, and I knew mm. a bunch of their employees. So it was really important. It was a very exciting time, and there was rumors about them possibly you know being acquired by Google. I guess which they turned down. Which also brings up a really interesting question: is when you know you see uh, some of these companies decide not to sell, like a Dropbox or something like that, and then it works out. But then you see other companies such as a dig and or something like that and they turned down what was a substantial amount of money uh and look what happens to them they sort of go down in flames you know in a way yeah and uh and you see you know kevin used to talk about the problem with dig was their lack of scalability you know the the infrastructure wasn't built correctly um but apparently yeah reddit can essentially spawn up new you know, sort of like dig type of like pages like crazy on topics and things like that with little effort. Not the nicest UI per se, but the user experience was, is, you know, quite good and quite easy. And, Mm. and the Mm. success of it, you know, uh, I think says a lot. I don't know. What are your thoughts, Greg? Yeah. I, we see a lot here, right? I mean, there's so many, so many startups. And one thing that the article pointed out, at least, you know, after I thought about it was really IP, Mm. you know, um, value in the product obviously is going to be the number of people you have signed up, Mm. you know, and, and active users and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think one people, what other people do forget, and I think this is very difficult for startups is actually getting, is developing IP. It's expensive, Mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, your your bootstrap startup, unless they want to spend, you know, thousands of dollars uh, on patents, uh, 
it, it's difficult to to develop that IP portfolio. Mm-hmm. And Dig actually, if you thought about it, they did it right, like you said. Um, the IP portfolio ended up being, you know, like four million to LinkedIn, mm-hmm. and and actually the, the the team, the team of developers, as you said, uh, who developed Dig, uh, Washington Post ended up paying uh, what they reported on TechCrunch to say twelve million dollars. Right, right. So so I think that you know it, you know um, uh, intellectual property, whether it's the team of developers or it's the actual patent portfolio it continues to be important uh, if it's a if it's a if it's a well-known site like dig yeah. so you know another little so, historical funny thing about this yeah. whole thing is that there was no like on facebook and tell dig right <laughs> i mean they effectively did that oh. i think they were inspired by dig quite a bit you know because dig was like yeah. thumbs up thumbs down essentially right and then there right, was like right. Like you know, like the like. <laughs> so what's the next one by me, uh, by Adolfo here? Uh, Facebook endorses Google's SPDY or Speedy Network Protocol. Yeah, yeah, I know, super nerdy topic here, right? But once I started That's reading right. reading into it, and thanks to uh, CNET uh, News for this story, the Internet Media mm-hmm. section there. Uh, so yeah. Um, Anyways, interesting. Let me let me just explain here. Speedy was developed primarily at Google. Uh, assuming you're loading a web page that supports it, Speedy improves browsing in two ways. Uh, it's a more secure successor to HTTP because it forces SSL encryption for all sites, and it's faster. Uh, in fact, Speedy oh, is uh, part God. of Google's wider Make the Web Faster effort. Uh, Speedy speeds up um, browsing with multiplexing. Uh, what, what multiplexing is is multiple streams of data, uh, which can be sent over a single network connection. Um, the ability to, to assign high and low priorities to web page resources being requested from a server and compression of header information that accompanies communications for resource requests and responses. So super nerdy stuff. Essentially, it's it, you get more, it's faster, and it's more secure, sort of what it, what it boils down to. But uh, what's really important, is, as you can probably guess, the biggest hurdle for Google's Spidey is, uh, since it's Spidey is supported now through every single browser, except one uh and it is microsoft's browser so that's probably the biggest hurdle right <laughs> given that internet explorer is is sort of one of the biggest things and the crux of this story so is that huge. facebook adopted this technology and is and is sort of like a behind is actually using a twitter as well actually um the company huh. uh isn't uh, the company uh microsoft isn't uh in interested in us in speedy and it's developed its own of course uh option which is called http speed plus mobility this is where things oh. get interesting. Not only has Facebook thrown its support behind Speedy, despite uh, that the fact that it was developed by Google, arg- arguably its its biggest competitor, but it has made a point to say that it's better than HTTP Speed Plus Mobility, which has Microsoft as uh, one of its key investors. You know, uh, Facebook and Microsoft have been very cozy as of late. So, you know, it's, it's sure. a very telling tale here. So we have to applaud Facebook here, um, says the author. Uh, the social networking giant is choosing the technology it believes it actually believes is better and is making a point to ignore its relationship with those who developed each. Uh, that's a level of maturity that even Google and Microsoft often fail to display. Um, so, so good on uh, uh, Facebook for this. Uh, that being said, you know, the, the technology isn't per- perfect. We've heard some slight criticism uh, from, I know, the Twitter team has talked about this technology, but it seems to be the best sort of option out there at the moment. So exciting stuff, and I suppose it's only going to get better. Uh, hopefully Microsoft will sort of capitulate to what seems to be some growing yeah. momentum uh, with, with Speedy, but uh, we shall see. All right. Well, you know what I like about you know protocols, and if you could get more speed out of it, you don't have to redo the ex- existing infrastructure, right? right? Right. You know. Right. Right. So I think that's kind of an important thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And and to be completely so, secure, yeah. Uh, yeah. So Greg, man, let's let's yes. let's uh, get to some some familiar uh, uh, company <laughs> company branding here. Apple. What are they investigating? Some in-app purchasing fraud. Wow, this has been a big story. Very big story this week. So yeah. um, I think uh, thanks to Peter Kafka of all things digital for this story. Um, you know, he said that Apple's looking into reports that a Russian program has figured out how to make an in-app purchases for free on some yeah. iOS applications. <laughs> and those reports come from uh, Jordan Kahn of 9to5Mac on July 13th that says, you know, let's just summarize, a Russian developer has published a method of obtaining in-app purchases from the iOS apps for free. 
first noticed by Russian blog iekb.ru. Uh, uh, you know, right. the, yeah. the in ever <laughs> proxy method does not require a jailbreak, uh, which is interesting. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. Can be completed by novices in three steps using just an iOS device and mm -hmm. allows users to install the in app content for free. Yeah, that's scary. The hack also works for all devices running iOS 3 to 6.0. Yep. Um, now, uh, 9 to 5. <laughs> Uh, looked at their video. There was a video up actually yeah. for a very brief uh, instant. They tested it and it it worked oh, yeah. on some on yeah. some apps. Right. Not all. Um, and you know, Apple obviously is is very concerned with it. And so yeah. Natalie Harrison yeah. did the spokeswoman conversation with us saying the the security of the app store is incredibly important to us and developer community we take reports of fraudulent activity very seriously and we're investigating which then probably right after that the video for that got taken down mm. and uh and uh yeah. uh archived forever right, right. <laughs> let's move on to the next story can we uh, let's see so previewing of a full-blown XBMC uh, for Android. I saw that article on our, our, our website this week. Yeah, so, I was about yeah, to say, to that. broken by NerdStalker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the story. Uh, yeah, so XBMC is reporting on their blog that they are going, they're launching a full-blown version of XBMC. Yeah, that's Xbox Media Center, if you don't know, on Android. Uh, so we're not talking about remote. There's remotes available, great remotes actually available for the iPhone and the Android phone, mm -hmm. uh, to, and mm -hmm. iPad actually, mm -hmm. iOS I should say, uh, to control XBMC on your, you know, on your television or your whatever computer running, whatever, nice. from, from your mobile device. Well, this is actual full-on on XBMC running on your device, particular device, whatever it may be. So yeah, not a remote, not a thin client, the real deal. No root or jailbreak required. XBMC can be launched as an application on your set-top box, tablet, phone, or wherever else Android may be found, says the blog. Uh, the feature set on Android is the same that you have come to expect from XBMC. No difference from its cousin on the desktop. Primary development uh, was done on Pyvos Zios DS set-top box. And that's no coincidence. You'll notice that Pyvos is now listed as an official sponsor of XBMC. Um, XBMC is stable and works great there, uh, as well as on various tablets and phones. Uh, though with Android, as uh, many of you probably know, uh, that's only the beginning of the, of the story. Um, the port is fully usable and lots of fun to play with. It's not quite ready for prime time yet. Uh, they will begin releasing APKs for interested beta testers in the coming weeks, so so very soon. Uh, but for those who are up to the task, uh, as you would expect from XBMC, the source code is available. So, you know, go to the XBMC.org website and look for that. Um, Let's see. There is also the issue of having a proper UI for small screen devices. Typically, XBMC mm -hmm. skills have been designed for use on a television, so use on a small phone can be clunky. But there is nothing to keep, uh, nothing from keeping skinners from creating more functional touch oriented skins, like the included touched skin from Jez underscore X. Uh, there are so many interesting uh, features that they could uh, take advantage of, like launching apps, location awareness, speech recognition, and on and on. So. Um, a very interesting sort of uh, platform uh, that's opening up for all kinds of devices and usages where we haven't even thought of yet here. So, Greg, man, another Apple yes. story. Apple, no way. <laughs> We're green. We're not green. What What's going on? Yeah, there's been a lot of talk in the media about this one, too. Oh, that, that's another one. Yeah, it's another popular Apple story this week. So, uh, Kevin Smith of Business Insider, uh, uh, Twitter, SA, SAI, um, I, you know, kind of... Uh, showed up on my uh, reader this week and I was like what what's going on you know and I was just kind of shocked by actually the announcement so uh, you know he he said that uh, the Apple Apple released an official letter this afternoon that they're taking back early news that its products were no longer government uh, environmental friendly uh, in the EPEAT E P E A T rating system. That's right. Uh, so for those who don't know EPEAT, uh, EPEAT primarily measures a product's recyclability and energy efficiency, and that certification covers uh, laptops, uh, desktops, monitors. But basically, which is interesting, I did not know this, but not tablets or phones. Did you know that? Huh. Um, and I, that was a surprise when I did research on this wow, article. So the, the international groups, yeah, I think it'll come soon. Mm -hmm. The initial group's ratings were developed in collaboration with industry leaders, including Apple, believe it or not, mm -hmm. and are used by some governments to determine which gadgets are environmentally friendly to be bought by the the public money. Now, 
when I saw the t uh, the article from I think SF Business Times, you know, the mayor of San Francisco, Mayor Lee, said because they did that, yeah. we are not buying. No one in the city of San Francisco is allowed to buy uh, right, Apple not. products. Yeah, anymore, we're not going right? to buy that. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know that you told the employees you couldn't buy Mac products. I, okay, you know so. Um, Bob Mansfield, then uh, Apple vice president of hardware, uh, said. Uh, yesterday, um, or a couple days ago, Friday, uh, we recently heard from many loyal Apple customers who were disappointed to learn that we had removed our products from the EP rating system. I recognize this was a mistake. Starting today, we all eligible Apple products were are back on EP. Now, you know what what made me think about this and research this was was why did they even go down this road, yeah. right? And there's rumors out there that the new line of MacBook Pros, uh, laptops, uh, uh, which have not been reviewed by EP, may, may be too costly for Apple to to uh, get recyclable. Well, Speed round! Speed round! So, anyway, Adolfo, what do you got up first on the speed round? So, yeah, so damages figures like uh, the $147 million verdict against RIM could make smartphones unaffordable. So, this broke today, actually, at the day, uh, today of this recording here, which is Sunday, uh, July 15th. Um, yes. The biggest smartphone parent, uh, uh, I'm sorry, patent news of the weekend is that a Northern California jury, it's, this is all coming up here from Northern California for some reason, uh, rendered a verdict in favor of a little known company named M-Formation Technologies against BlackBerry, maker of, you know, Research in Motion, RIM, to the tune of $147.2 million, assuming that a reasonable per unit royalty for one patent would be $8. Yes, $8. Per, per phone, basically. Uh, this is based on a finding of infringement of only a single patent, U.S. patent number, blah, 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 on a system and method for remote control and management of wireless devices. That's not vague, is it? At trial time, seven claims of that patent were at issue. All seven were found infringed, but five of them were deemed anticipated. The plaintiff prevailed on independent claim one and its dependent claim number six. Uh, as CBS, uh, who, who reported this, uh, notes, uh, wow. this could hardly come at a worse time for Rin and the company is, quote, evaluating all legal options, unquote. Uh, with all of the other smartphone-related cases pending, the consequences of this position on a, quote, reasonable royalty, unquote, would be catastrophic. Um, so, yeah, this uh, bad, bad timing. Well, this could be really bad for the, for the industry as a whole if, if this thing holds up, actually. And, uh, you know, RIM is the sort of continuing pinata here. This is from PSFK. Uh, Don Michael Asselar de Leon um, uh, uh, wrote about this. It was about, I thought it was kind of interesting, talking about green and mm -hmm. uh, apple green. Uh, we'll talk about Ford green now. So, um, you know, they, they're they going an interesting direction, I thought, uh, is, is in their vehicle development and design philosophies. Mm -hmm. And and basically, in response to a growing calls for sustaining development amongst American uh, car manufacturers, this 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 manufacturer decided to take it all away and what they have done now uh, is that uh, they're div they're t instructing all their designers to design with eco eco friendly components and mm. non bi you know and and eliminate you know non biodegradable materials yeah. um, in the that create the industrial waste mm. so um, they're they're using plants they're using beans they're using a lot of things cool. into the plastics of the of the car and uh, you know, this week I'll be interviewing a Ford pop-up store, a green pop-up store, which just opened down the block here in San Francisco, Soma, mm -hmm. and I'll be interviewing them on on how these products actually go in there. So, Excellent. you know, catch that interview a little later this week. And uh, anyway. Uh, Internet Explorer uh, announces, uh, basically Microsoft sort of announces, actually via Paul Irish, he found out that uh, uh, when Windows 8 comes out, uh, they've changed the updating sort of pattern for Internet Explorer. It used to be that we used to have to wait for big releases of Internet Explorer, you know, a major revs through and stuff Windows, like that. Through Windows, I guess, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. through Windows, yeah. And now what they're going to do is they're going to do sort of a Chrome-like approach where um, they're going to sneak in these these updates essentially in their security updates. Um, this is of particular interest to, to security 
uh, you know, employees and system administrators and people who, who have to own this kind of stuff, especially in the enterprise. I mean, this is good for the end user, you know, the, you know, yeah, our grandmas right, right. and moms and stuff and people who just don't care about the browser that comes on your computer yeah. uh, because you, it's automatically going to bump up legacy operating systems, especially this, which is particularly important to web developers uh, like Windows XP, right. for instance, gets bumped up to a current ish version, not the latest one because it can't uh, handle it, I believe, but, um, but a much more current one. So uh, the baseline for what you can develop for rises up, which is great. Uh, the issue for security experts and for the system administrators is that you may have in house uh, applications that are dependent on these um, specific versions of Internet Explorer. You go and throw a change in there, and then suddenly your web application has changed, or you might have a bug and you don't know why kind of thing. So what they're doing is they're providing also these, as, you know, as, I guess you can jump through a series of these uh, these hoops, so to speak, so that your sysadmin security can opt out of uh, upgrading uh, IE for, the uh, I guess, the particular security update. But it remains mm -hmm. to be seen. Uh, uh, this is going to be... Uh, Another, you know, possible thorn in the side of enterprise for adopting Windows 8, and uh, perhaps the enterprise Ooh, will finally start yeah. looking elsewhere for uh, operating system options. Christopher Rick of Real SEO. Uh, uh, it was a great thought piece on why Adobe really dropped mobile flash support and it wasn't really because Apple won the war. I, I thought he gave some pretty good perspective on HTML5 not being ready for prime time. And he also gave a perspective of why, and, and, and because of that, why flash is still going to be uh, adoptable for the years to come. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, maybe Adobe's roadmap of how it really folds into HTML. Well, so, could, Greg, how about your so, tip of the week, man? Oh, well, you know, I was thinking about all the kids are out on summer. Um, you know, we're in the middle of it right now. Um, your child's obviously uh, out for the summer. Um, there was a, something I thought about is uh, tablets for kids. And uh, there was an article I, I, I took out of the ZDNet archives, but I thought we, we'd bring it up here. The 10 best tablets for kids um, from Ricardo Bilton from ZDNet. And, uh, you know, if you want to keep your kids busy over the summer, this is a, a nice way to go. They have some really kid-friendly um, tablets in this article. And, you know, check it out. Um, uh, also, Squidoo also has a has a good article on this. So, cool. you know, parents out there, check that out. Nice. You know, and wh and what's your tip of the week? Yeah, my tip of the week is via Zenny Jardin of Boing Boing. Thank you. It's a browser extension that converts all YouTube comments into herp derp is what they're calling it. Um, you know, we all love herp YouTube, derp. you know, which is great. You can find uh, Nerd Stalker on YouTube, by the way. <laughs> and uh, what what. The big down point of uh, YouTube, I think the biggest weakness of YouTube are its comments. Uh, a lot of times you'll watch a video and you'll just see a huge string of trolls just, just saying horrible things to each other and, and just it's nonsensical. There's maybe some good stuff in there, but it's rare. It's YouTube is famous for really horrible comments. So why even deal with it? Why not just get yourself this, uh, this extension and, uh, and then it turns everything, all the comments into herp, derp, herp, derp, herp, derp, that kind of stuff like that. So, uh, from there it says, uh, I love YouTube comments is what Zenny says, Zenny, Jenny says, here's a simple browser extension to convert them to herp derp if you insist on reading the original which is highly discouraged click the comment ladies and gentlemen herp derp youtube comments is available for chrome safari opera firefox all supported thank you dear man so you can get you can find uh, this extension on the google chrome store or you can go to www.tanner.com that's www.tannr.com for all the other browsers so greg what do we got coming up Oh, well, we got we just finished the SF New Tech event uh, last Wednesday and in a couple of weeks we'll have a special SF New Tech event so we'll come to watch that uh, come to see the details coming soon for that. We also have uh, as we announced on the SF uh, uh, or the uh, Nerd Soccer site this week, I had an interview of someone creating the uh, Trans Bay uh, Festival which will feature um Film, video, merging with tech, and then creating AR experiences, cool. augmented reality experiences. Uh, and it's going to be at, wow. uh, if you look at our website, you'll see the press release. There should be about five or six venues around. Um, Nerd Soccer is going to be a part of it somehow, awesome. and uh, we're talking about that. But, uh, Sounds like fun. But I think... Uh, 
yeah, that's going to be a great event. Yeah. It's uh, in October. It's got plenty of uh, runway yet to plan and to create, but um, I think it's it's a great vision of really the next what I would call the leap of tech in the San Francisco Bay Area is merging the the film video with tech. All oh, right. If yeah. you want to find out more about Nerdstalker, please contribute any stories you want. Uh, use the hashtag NRDSDK. And we will definitely use your stories in the uh, uh, on the show here, or go to nerdstalker.com, our site, or just go to iTunes and you know take the easy way out and just subscribe to our audio or video podcast there, and give us a nice five star ratings, please. Or as I mentioned earlier, you can go to our uh, YouTube channel, just look up uh, Nerdstalker TV, all one word, Nerdstalker TV, and you will see all the goodness there. And hopefully, you'll install your Herp Derp, Herp Derp uh, extension. And not have to read any comments, huh? <laughs> So, uh, nice, Greg, nice. if they need to get a hold of you, how do they do that? Well, you can reach me on email at uh, socialgreg at nerdstalker.com, or you can reach me on Twitter right up there, uh, at socialgreg, and um, be happy to interact with you and, and entertain any comments about what we talked about on our podcast this week. And how do they get a hold of you, my friend? So you can reach me at adolfo at nerdstalker.com. That's A-D-O-L-F-O at nerdstalker.com, or at nerdstalker on Twitter. Feel free to, you know... Just reach out to us and, and, and give us a give us a high five, a virtual high five, and we will be very happy about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, and I'll thank see you. you next week, my friend, and see you all next week. Be careful out there. Right on. Thanks, everyone.